G'day everyone, Lauren Cress, the business scientist here. Welcome to part three of my three part series on building your content calendar. And today we're gonna to get into the how. If you haven't seen part one and part two, I highly recommend checking that out. I'll make sure the links are in the description uh, below. And if this is the first time that you've watched one of these videos, please remember to subscribe to my channel for more business marketing and career tips and like this video if you enjoy it. Also, if you have more questions about content calendars after watching this three-part series, please pop them in the comments below so I can make more videos that are valuable to you. All right, so let's jump into this third and final part. So just as a recap, in video one, we talked about why uh, a content calendar is so important. We went through the seven rules for brand growth from Professor Byron Sharp and pulled out these three core ingredients for what needs to go into your content calendar. We need to be thinking about relevance, rhythm, and reliability. And then you can see here, this matches onto our nine musts for your content calendar. So we talked about the key ingredients of relevance, rhythm, and reliability. And now in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you create different content calendars. Now, um, there's different ways you can do this and you might prefer either way or both depending on how your brain works and how you work. So I'm going to show you how you can pull each of these up onto your Miro board. If you want to find out more about Miro, uh, head to the link in the description below to sign up. You can sign up to three boards, boards for free. Uh, and it's one of my favorite new tools. I love it. So to get something like this on your board, all you do is you come over to templates and then you go content calendar, or you can also put calendar. Uh, what comes up is a few different ways that you can display content. Now, my to get the annual calendar, um, I picked this one. It will give you two calendars and then you just need to delete one. Um, if you want a monthly calendar, then obviously you come over to monthly calendar. All right, so I've just tidied this up, like I said, and this is how your yearly 2022 content calendar comes up. If you're in 2022, obviously moving forward, if it's 2023, you'll be using a 2023 calendar. Now, one of the benefits of the annual calendar is it tells you where the days fall and it also gives you a big, broad, at-a-glance overview of what's happening in the year. I'll show you one of the ways that I use to fill this out um, in the next part of this video. The other cool one is this month one and I quite like this for specifics. This is how the template comes up, but you can change the labels. Uh, it allows you to color code things and you can easily add different cards throughout the week. The thing that's really useful about this is it gives you a Monday to Friday view. So if you have certain posts going out on Monday, it doesn't matter what month it is, you can easily go, oh, this is my first week, you know, week one in uh, February. The first week that there's a Monday, this is what I'm doing. Okay. I think for best use, it's probably worth doing both. Okay, so here's one I prepared earlier. Let me just zoom in so you can see the specifics of what I've done. On the yearly calendar, how I've chosen to do this is more to help me see the overall view. So I don't get into specific content topics, but I look at where specific activities are happening um, so I can plan out the year. So I have production days in purple, content themes in green, webinars in yellow, any special offers or launches in this orange color, and I'm also going to show you how you can add international days or weeks uh, to your calendar so you know when to celebrate those as well. So as you can see here, what I chose to do for the content theme is I just picked a theme for each month. So I've got life, career, identity, entrepreneurship, growth, marketing, habits, and then I just repeat it again. So every six months I, go, I cycle through these six themes, these broad themes that I'm going to be talking about. I quite like doing something like this because it helps me also to focus on what's happening at different stages of the year. So generally in January, it's not going to be a year that, um, it, sorry, it's not going to be a month where people are at work, especially in Australia, lots of people are on holidays. So talking about things that aren't related to business, a bit more general in terms of planning ahead and thinking about the year that's been uh, is a little bit more appropriate. Similarly, our, count, our uh, financial year started in July. So even though people might be in the swing of uh, business, actually July tends to be a really, really busy month. 
it can also be a way to help people have a bit of a breather. So you can think about the rhythm of the year or the seasons, how that kind of affects um, what content you want to put out. And if, for instance, I got to June and I felt like this wasn't quite the right theme, I can always drag and drop and swap them around. You can see all my production days are put in. Mostly they're on Saturdays. Occasionally I do it on a Sunday. I also can see that I've got a conference coming up in March, which will mean I can't produce that weekend. So I'll have to make sure that I make up for that here. I might add an extra production day or make that a longer day. Um, now, say if you don't want to type, if you're going to do something like me where you're like, oh, I've actually got this, you know, most of the time um, every week, what you can do is you can bulk copy. So I'm just pressing shift. I'm on a Mac. And then most of the time this last weekend isn't there, so I'm not going to copy that one. And then I can just copy it for each week or each month, sorry, and slot that in there, um, which just makes it, might put that a little bit that way because I've got another um, thing there. And in December, generally, I'm a little bit more flexible, so I won't bother worrying about scheduling that in just yet. And if I'm going to do this new product launch, we'll probably have it on the Monday. So I'll just move that there. And you can see now I've filled in all of that. It just gives me a starting place and then I can shuffle things around. Okay, webinars. I don't do a webinar all the time. I actually um, generally don't need to do webinars, but uh, depending on what happens with my business, I kind of like to have some placeholders in there. So um, we've got March, May, July, September, November. If I don't need them, I can delete them. What that also helps me to do is to think about, okay, this will be the weeks that I need to start promoting the webinar um, so I can see what's coming. And you just continue. So special offer, like I said, I've got new products coming out uh, every month. Well, that's my plan. And finally, this international day, I haven't put them in yet, but I want to give you an example. So on Miro, you can actually drag and drop like a PDF onto um, or an image directly onto uh, the board. So this actually allows me to flick through every month. I just downloaded this. Uh, I'll put a link to where you can download this from with all the different international days. And so then I started going through and thought, well, what what's going to be, I mean, you can, you can put all of them in, but there might be ones that are particularly stand out and are relevant to you. So, for instance, the one that stood out to me is on the 11th of February is an international day for women's, women and girls in science. So I've created a sticky for that, and then I'll just go and find that day. Oh, and I do my own sound effects. <laughs> I'm put this over here. So I know that's coming up. Um, as you can see, though, like if you if you wanted to, you can absolutely start planning each day of the week in here. Um, there's no reason that you can't, but it might feel a bit overwhelming and it might also feel like you can't fit in everything that you need to. You can, however, zoom in and get really, really small if you wanted to put multiple stickies on each on each day. Right. Um, so that's what I think the monthly calendar is quite useful for if you if you want to take a more specific look. Now, this would be, as we saw for February, this will be the last day of January, actually. This is the 31st. It doesn't really matter as much because now I'm in a, a Monday to Friday view. So what I like to have is I like to have a, um, have a theme which you can see here for uh, each day of the week for my social media posts. So Monday Mindset Post, Tips Tuesday Post, wins, Win Wednesday Post, Throwback Thursday Post and Fun Friday Post. Now, say if you wanted to have your newsletters go out on Monday, you could put that, so I've got that in yellow. These are my four newsletters that are going out. I can even say, oh, you know, which ones are written and which ones aren't. So, you know, I'm going to put D for done here. Um, and which ones aren't. So I know what I need to write. Then I can get more specific. So I might say, well, the Mindset Monday post is going to be about entrepreneurship mon uh, mindset because that's what I'm talking about in my newsletter. So that's easy. That one happens to be about mindset anyway. Similar here, this is fixed and growth mindset. So again, I know what's going in there. Uh, this week I'm going to be talking in the newsletter about psychometric tests. So 
this might be more about something to do with career transition. And then here, what jo jobs earn the most? Um, so maybe this is something around career um, or maybe this is around worth uh, and confidence. And then, yeah, I just continue going along. I have an idea of what content I already have that I can repurpose in these. If you have new content, then you would just be coming up with new ideas. Like if you haven't, if you haven't created the content before, you'd be coming up, up with new ideas for that. So Tips Tuesday would be a, a tip that relates to what my um, customers are looking for. Win Wednesday might be like a case study or a client testimonial that uh, helps to showcase what I can do for people. Throwback Thursday, that can fit into lots of things. It could be a post that I've already done that was popular. It could be something that happened to me in the past that I want to tell a story about. And Fun Friday might be something funny. It could be like a blooper reel. It could be a funny meme that I want to share. Um, and it gives a bit of variety um, in the social media sort of schedule. You might want to get more specific. So you might want to say, okay, tip, Tips Tuesday is always a carousel post. Um, Win Wednesday, that's also going to be a carousel uh, or maybe on LinkedIn and Instagram, Throwback Thursday, that might be like a video or image post. Um, mindset might be a um, text post, text only, um, which wouldn't work on Instagram, but on LinkedIn it does. Or maybe it's a poll. Uh, it just depends what your what your what fits with where you're where you're putting your content out and what you're doing. The other thing to think about is what these posts are going to, where they're going to lead to, what the call to action is going to be. You don't necessarily need to have a call to action in every post, um, but it's worth asking for your audience to do something. So you can ask them to comment, you can ask them to share, you can ask them to like if you're looking more at growing awareness. If you want to get more conversion, which you shouldn't be asking for in every post, but if you sprinkle that out, you might have like, this post is my conversion post, for instance. Um, that's when you want to ask for the audience to go further down your content marketing funnel. So it might be about going to visit a page on your website, a sales page on your website, sign up to a webinar. Where does that fit into your content? You can start to identify that as well. So that's it from me. I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you did, please uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, if there thing, there's things that I didn't cover that you're really keen to learn about, please drop them in the comments as well. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for more business marketing and career tips from me. Cheers, guys. Have an awesome week.